Hi everybody, Dr. Pedro Shojai here with Dr. Sarah Gottfried at the Health Bridge. Hey everybody. Hey, so we're, uh, we're doing some, uh, some housekeeping here and um, last I checked, uh, today is day 94 for me and day 93 for you on our 100 day gong. Boy, it's been a long road. <laughs> <laughs> this has been my first gong and a very long gong. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's easy to do all your gong items um, if you are kind of at home and things aren't moving very fast and bullets aren't flying and you're not on long flights and all that, but you know, life can get really fast at times. And so, you know, Sarah and I, for those of you who are just tuning in saying, what the hell are these people talking about? We've committed to a discipline of a hundred days. Uh, each of us picked a certain amount of things that we're going to do every day without fail. And if you don't do it, you fail and you start over. And so we're right now, um, I'm at 94 and she's at 93 cause she started a day. Well, she recently set on day one and started. <laughs> I screwed up day one. She screwed up day one, um, which is fine, right? That's part of the learning process. But you know, we're, we're on the home stretch right now. Um, and I uh, just wanted to kind of get updates from you, Sarah, and kind of talk about my, my growth and challenges as well. So we could, yeah, because just to be clear, there's a lot of our listeners that are doing gongs with us. So if you're just tuning in, this isn't just about us. It's about us doing this with all of our, our fans because it's about us being human and showing that, you know, we're not just going to preach, we're going to do. Yeah, well, I love that. And I, I, I'm so intrigued by what has come up around this gong. You know, the, the beautiful part about being towards the end is that I can see the finish line and there's uh, so much excitement about that. I can tell you, you know, with the things that I put in my gong, I was maybe a little ambitious. And with a future gong, I don't want to be as much of an overachiever. That's probably a conversation that you and I will have to have offline. But I definitely have found that plank pose and push-ups and swinging the kettlebell are so much easier than they mm. were when I first started and even halfway through. But there's also something interesting that's happened, Pedro. You know, I was swinging the kettlebell yesterday, doing my 50 swings, and I was noticing this resistance that was coming up. Even though I'm day 93, it was just like, I'm so sick of this kettlebell, you know, like, <laughs> oh, I can't wait to be done with this gong. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting because that's not how I feel about it. It's more that I was stressed. I was working too much yesterday. And this kettlebell became kind of the focus of how I wasn't kind of integrating these different parts of myself. I wasn't, you know, sort of noticing the way that I scheduled myself yesterday. It was this interesting foil for kind of these larger problems that I need to address in my life. So I just, I thought that was kind of my my latest discovery with the gong. Thank you for sharing that and being honest about that because that's reality. I mean, uh, I will oftentimes resent my self-care rituals when they're getting in the way of whatever, you know, uh, tsunami I'm, I'm tumbling around in, right? And, you know, right now, I mean, you just finished a book tour uh, for your, your book. I, I'm in the movie launch. I mean, things get really busy and sometimes I'll look up and it's dark, right? And be like, holy crap what happened? And, you know, here I am at like, you know, 8 p.m. in the yard swinging a kettlebell or doing my push-ups or meditating and all these kinds of things. And so I've had moments of resentment and I've also had these really powerful moments recently, especially as, you know, I'm sitting in front of computer screens way too much with this movie launch and stepping out and just being like, okay, it's meditation time. And, and just watching how far out my brain had gone how far out my energy and my attention was scattered on this like digital universe that I was like enthralled in and just really pulling it back and anchoring into my breath and then coming back in and making two or three key critical decisions that come from clarity when 20 minutes earlier I was this like scattered, uh, you know, reactionary mess. And so it's, you know, it's in times of struggle. I mean, some of our best advances in medicine and science happen during war. Right, and so it's a really interesting thing to notice, um, especially if you're, you know, well into it and you're starting to get gather enough data about yourself and your own perceived limitations and um, time management issues and all the things that you and I have, you know, obviously run into over 93 or 94 days. Yeah, yeah, this is this is really good material, and I. 
I appreciate that. You know, I, I think um, this gong has really taught me about some of the ways that um, I can work better, like I can work less. And some of the ways, um, you know, I'm, I'm always thinking about, okay, what's the minimum effective self-care to really feel productive and to be of service. But the gong has created this container around the self-care that is not so much the minimum effective, but more, how can I really enrich my life with these things that I've committed to? How can I stack them through the day so that it's not dark at night and I have to do 50 push-ups? Mm. And so it's it's really gotten me to look at self-care in a different way. And I wanna ask you, you, you know, this is my first gong, as I've mentioned multiple times, you've done this many times. And if I'm really honest and truthful with myself, I would say, I want to do another gong pretty soon. Mm -hmm. So talk to us about this, you know, how much time do you have in between gongs? What's your way of, you know, kind of sealing the deal and making sure that you are extracting every little nugget from the gong that you're experiencing and not, you know, future tripping on the next gong. What's, what's, what's the hmm. time frame? Yeah. Kicking the can and saying, well, I'll take care of this in the next gong is an interesting phenomenon, right? Like, you know, I'll gladly pay you Tuesday for a hamburger today. You know, it's like the whole, the, the whole, uh, delayed gratification piece that our psyche wants to go into. It's very easy for me to just project out and be like, look, you know what, you're in the launch and next year will be easier. Next year is never easier because, you know, the next kid comes or whatever happens, right? The tornadoes keep coming. And so are you better or are you still a slave to circumstance becomes the question. And so for me, I, I've experimented. I've been doing this stuff for a very long time. And so like, I think two to three weeks is kind of the sweet spot for me of just like, oh my God, I don't Finally, I don't have to do all these push-ups and all this stuff and let me just be lazy. I want to really revel in being lazy for a few days. And then afterwards, I kind of get bored of being lazy. And so I've had instances where I've gone six months between gongs because you're off a gong and then you look up one day and you're like, wow, I haven't, I haven't been on a gong in a very long time. And, you know, I just find that I'm better on a gong. And so I'll just kind of get back and do an about face and kind of jump back on. Currently... Um, there's a really, like my favorite day to start a gong is coming up. And so it just worked out this way. And it's a very auspicious day in terms of kind of astrology and how things work with the stars is the winter solstice. Because in Taoist and kind of uh, early Gnostic thinking, that's the, that's the original new year, right? Is when the, the yin energy is at its maximum expression and that kernel of yang energy, that expressive energy of life, kind of comes back and moves into dominance in the universe. And so for me, I like, you know, I will ride that energetic wave into the next cycle. So I'll spend three weeks after this, I'll be done on the 25th of November. I'll spend three weeks after this or whatever that, that comes out to just really kind of thinking about what went right, what went wrong, how much lip service I gave to certain items and how much I really engaged in them and where, you know, my awareness was kind of tethering out. And then say, okay, December 21st, I'm starting the next one. And here's my intention. Here's my goals for the next 100 days. And how can I make this better? How can I incorporate this better into my life? So it's constant. It's like a refining process. And you're, so you're distilling your best self with every gong. Uh -huh. I love how you went urban monk on me there. It's, <laughs> it's so exciting whenever you do that. And, uh, you know, it's interesting. I was just watching a film with my husband, Shawshank Redemption. Great movie. Right? Amazing. Morgan Freeman. And I, I was thinking about this recidivism, you know, how there's in the story, I don't want to spoil it for you, but uh, it's about a prison and about what happens when these guys get out of prison, especially when they've been in a long time. And I, I have a little bit of that feeling as we finish the gong, you know, right? That I, I don't want to go into the Christmas holidays with no gong and no structure. Mm. So I really like this idea of the winter solstice and, you know, sort of picking an auspicious time instead of a random time to start your gong. You can certainly pick the random time. You, know, you yeah. can start a gong at any time. But I, I like that idea of having this container as we go into the holidays, you know, this time where we're surrounded by so much abundance and maybe overindulging. And I, I love how the gong gives me the sense of temperance mm. and, you know, sort of um, 
a solemn quality mm, mm. that really works for me. So um, I may start the day before you since I've been de- lagging you by one day. So I'll, I'll have to think about that. I'll have to think about when my start day is. Get up ahead of me. Yeah, exactly. Now I'll, I'll be chasing you for 100 days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I actually, I mean, if, you, if you're listening to this and it's past December uh, 21st to 2014, don't stress, just start with us. We have resources on healthbridgeshow.com uh, slash gong, uh, tons of them. Uh, and you guys, just tons of free resources for you guys to jump on and do with us. But if you're listening to this before December 21st, I invite you to join us for this round if you are you know, so willing because it's fun doing it together. I have hundreds of people over on well.org that are doing it with me right now and or started before me even and are finishing and it's, it's, it's quite an accomplishment. It's a, it's, a, it's a hell of a feather in the cap to say you did something every day without fail for 100 days because one of the things that I've noticed with people in general is we're so accustomed now, the recidivism if you will, we're so accustomed now to failing and proving to ourselves that we're going to continue to fail with bombed New Year's resolution after resolution, bombed, you know, a diet plan that you cheat on or something like that, that having the tools and the discipline to actually get a win under your belt starts to build that little fire of willpower and then connects it with the focus so that you can actually get some measurable wins in life. And then you build on those, like a beachhead, you build on those so that you can become an effective person and start making things happen again. And I just think that this, that discipline, I mean, I studied in monasteries and I took it for granted. And I realized that that discipline wasn't built into the fabric of American culture at least, or it was and it got lost. So it's a big part of the, the kind of psychographics of how people keep failing diets and exercise programs. And so for me, it's been tremendous because I will, you know, I might vary 15 pounds at any given point in my life, depending on what's going on, but I'll always get tethered back. And you should see what I do with my push-ups now. I mean, I could push myself up into a standing position and 94 days ago, that wasn't close to being reality. You know, I've dropped 15 pounds, uh, you know, I'm, I'm doing great. And so I can, I can take credit for that myself and look back at what I've done for 94 days straight and say, wow, a path to success that I chose, that I feel good about, uh, that's working. Great, brain. Register that. Let's keep going. Yes. It's a it's an integrity loop. It creates this integrity, which you're talking about. And I, I feel like I want to see you do a push-up. We might need to do a video <laughs> of your, your uh, you know, towards the end of the gong, what your push-up looks like, because it sounds like it doesn't look quite the same as my push-up. I want to pick up on a point you just made. You know, I, I like this book by Charles Duhigg where he talks about the power of habit. It's still on the New York Times bestseller list. And I, I feel like the reason why so many people fail with diets and with their New Year's resolutions is that they're relying on willpower, which can wane. And they don't have those habits created. And I think so many folks are confused when it comes to creating those habits. What I love about the gong is that it really gives you the discipline and the structure to get these habits in your life so that you can sustain these major health changes and the benefits and um, and really experience transformation. I also want to say, you know, I, I've been proselytizing the gong everywhere I go. I was on a trip to Seattle and I was doing some push-ups and plank pose in the gym. And I had a guy come up to me and he was like, what are you doing? And I told him about the gong and he got really excited. And so he went to healthbridgeshow.com forward slash gong. He created his own gong. He emailed me about what he put in his gong. And I, you know, I just really encourage our listeners to try it out if you haven't already to share it with other people, because it really allows you to set up that habits dashboard that I think so many of us are lacking. Habits dashboard. Nice poll. That's good. Yeah, look at you. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, we're just rounding this out. Uh, maybe what we'll do is we'll both do a victory lap video that we'll upload to the Facebook page once our gongs are over uh, and just kind of talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly and, um, you know, just show where we're at. 
Uh, and then we'll plan out for our next one. I know I'm going into hibernation uh, through December and you're gonna hopefully get some time down as well so that we could come out fresh in, in January. But we're trying to uh, get enough shows for you guys so that uh, we can stay in front of you during uh, during our kind of personal hiatuses, if that's a word. Hiatai. Hiatai? 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 That, that sounds like, that sounds like- I just a, made that up. Yeah, totally. That sounds like karate. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, yeah, I, I would love to hear from any of our fans that have also been on gongs. Just go to facebook.com slash the help bridge and let us know how it's going for you. And uh, uh, share uh, if, if you feel so inclined, you know, kind of the good, the bad and the ugly and where you might have had traps and pitfalls and we'll try to help you go through it. And um, hopefully uh, we can all start together on the 21st and get a fresh one going. Nice. I, I really like it. Thank you for sharing all your wisdom. You've been through this so many times. You're like the the tour guide of the gong. <laughs> I'm holding up my Hulk sunglasses Bridge. here. Everyone just... <laughs> <laughs> people, people. Stop, stop. Well, I, I did this in private for years until students called me out and said, hey, what are you doing? That seems to be working for you. And so it's not something I just thought of in the shower. It's been, you know, it's 20 years of, of discipline and practice from ancient, you know, kind of Taoist and Buddhist temples that have assembled into kind of a modern practice that Sarah and I are benefiting from as two really busy people who fly a lot and travel a lot and do a lot of stuff. So if it could work for us, chances are it could work for most people listening. And so, you know, we've tested it for you. Let's do it together next time. Nice. Yep. Well, thank you, Pedram. This was fun to, you know, kind of recap our gongs. And I like that victory lap idea. So what's going to go in your victory lap? Uh, basically, all my gong items, like my my uh, kettlebell swing, I'll do a handstand because we have an early handstand that I was uh, not great at. <laughs> <laughs> Can we see the before and after? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll post it. I'll post it before. Um, it was great. I was just like grabbing on my belly and being like, if I didn't have all this, <laughs> uh, Jonathan Baylor filmed it um, when we were out at uh, JJ's event um, in the desert. And so, yeah, I already shared that shamelessly. It's like, look at the fat on this guy. And so now I'm not that guy. I mean, I've lost a lot of weight and I feel great. And so I'll, I'll share, you know, whatever I can uh, with that. And um, yeah, I mean, there's no shame here. We all live life and we all take arrows but it's about you know how you get up uh, when you get knocked down and it's about how you deal with stress and be resilient versus saying oh my god stress is coming I surrender you know stress is a part of life how do you deal with it yeah beautiful okay everybody thank you so much for joining us today we so appreciate you listening hope that you are on board to do the next gong with us and uh we're just grateful to have you you know let us know how things are going go to our Facebook page tell us what's up we're just really excited that you're here with us. That's it. We love you guys. Okay, thanks, Sarah. Thanks, everybody. Bye now. Bye.